What's going on, guys? <laughs> Let go from Revolution here with Raul Pages, who's like one of the hottest young independent watchmakers. You should see his booth is like mobbed uh, in the AHCI exhibition area. I, I managed to extract him and get him up here because I want you to see this watch, which, okay, before I get into it, like people ask me what's like, what's really dope. This is really dope. It's phenomenal, right? Like it's phenomenal from a design perspective. The size is 38.5. It's a regulator, but it's a beautiful contemporary regulator with incredible finish on the dial side. And it's really fresh looking, but then you turn the movement over and I'll, you know, I'll hide it to you for you. I'll show you in a bit. It's a beautiful German silver execution of, um, you know, reminiscent of a, an old marine chronometer, huge balance wheel and dude, D10 escapement, right? I, I can't even think of the last D10 escapement I saw. I think the last one I saw was uh, Kari and Jean-François Mojan did one for like uh, Urban Jurgensen many years ago, right? But this one is, this is extraordinary. And you can really see it as well, which is yeah. also important. So Raul, first of all, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yes. Like you say, very busy these kind of days. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> you like sold out to 2028 or something like this? Yeah, it's so, something like years. this. <laughs> two, two years. I get to go back to the workshop. <laughs> and something. make some watches, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> Raul, tell me your story, like about your watchmaking story. How did you become a watchmaker and, and what do you love in watchmaking? So I was born in Switzerland, so of course, close to La Chaux de Fonds. Ah, so cool. Of course, with a lot of watchmaking be, uh, around me. Right. <laughs> so I decided to be a watchmaker because I, I wanted to work with uh, technical things, but also with very creative things. Right. I like to draw a lot. Nice. I uh, really like architecture, design. And uh, I studied in the watchmaking school of Le Locle. Mm. And then I decided to make um, another specialization at school for, to be restorator, to restore antique watches. And uh, then I make another specialization to design movements, to wow. be the more complete possible That's as, as impressive. a watchmaker. Yes. Then I worked for six years at the Parmigiani Restoration Workshop. Ah, okay. Yep. Okay, this is very cool because the Parmigiani uh, Restoration Workshop is where a lot of rock stars have come from, right? Kari yeah, was Kari, there, yeah. Denis Flageolet was there, yeah. like there's also some, like, uh, Stefan Sarpanova yeah. was, was there as well. All right, so that's cool. Yeah, okay, yeah. Cool, cool, cool. It's a very good school. Yeah, I'm just going to move your mic up slightly. Uh, all right. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, when you restore antique pocket watches and you have the, uh, lucky enough to have this kind of masterpieces from the past. Right. You learned a lot as a watchmaker. Fantastic. You, you see all the best mechanics uh, in the history of uh, watchmaking. Right. And you learned also a lot in making comp by making components. Because if it's a wheel is broken, you know, you cannot just replace the wheel. No. You got to make it or yes. sometimes make the tool to make, to make the, the wheel. That's, yeah. that's great. So you learned a lot. You are inspiring by lots of um, timepieces, clocks and automatons. Right. And I really love automatons. Oh yeah. So oh, I decided cool. to create my own automatons, and that was my first creation in 2012. Really? As independent. Wow. So I quit my job at Parmigiani. I was <laughs> sad about that, but I decided to be independent and create my my own creations. So I I make a tortoise automaton. In 2012. Ah, that, yes, I remember that. Yeah, okay. very small, yes. white gold with enamel, right. hand engravings. Cool. It was very fun uh, yes. piece. And uh, all the movement was made by hand with traditional machines. So right. it was a huge work uh, just for this unique piece. It was only one piece. Yes. And then after that, I um, decided to show that I'm a watchmaker. I can also produce timepieces. So I, um, I launched the Soberly Onyx model. Mm -hmm. It's a white gold, uh, 40 millimeters uh, time-only watch with an onyx dial. So it's a, you know, it's a stone and the color is very deep. Right. Very deep black color. For the movement, it was based on a SEMA movement, a okay. vintage movement that I totally refinish and I make my own balance wheel and balance bridge. I, I produced only 10 pieces, it was limited to 10 pieces, and during the same time I started to develop this new model I just launched uh, in January. Right. So it's my own movement and uh, it's excited for me. Because Dude, it's amazing. Because What's it's the, the name of the watch? The name is uh, Regulateur à détente. Okay. It's a detent regulator. Yes. <coughs> uh, RP1. RP, like Raoul Pages. 
Very nice. First model. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about the design of the dial, because we were talking about how it's a regulator, but yeah, regulators are very classic. They're based on yep. marine chronometers, but it feels so fresh and so vibrant. Yeah. Yep. You know? yeah. Like you said, I like historical timepieces. The, 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 um, the concept for the, this watch is a tribute to chronometry, chronometry timepieces. Right. So that's why I chose to make a regulator because you know it was this this kind of uh, time display was for the precision clocks, precision pocket watches. Right. But I wanted to not to just make a copy of a historical timepiece. I wanted to make my own creation. I really like uh, design, architecture, and um, that's the inspiration for the dial. For example, the blue color comes from Le Corbusier. Oh, lovely. The famous architect. Yes. He developed uh, a palette of color yes. in 1951. And this color, this blue color that I really like is uh, come from this uh, palette. Very cool. And I like the combination with the with the, all the colors of the dial. I think it fits uh, quite good, <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Let's go from there to actually, let's talk about the case. So you've got screwed lugs. Why did yeah. you go with screwed lugs? To add a, a technical, technical design mm -hmm. because it's a, uh, to me, it's consistent with the whole uh, global concept. Right. To have a chronometric timepiece, so it had a technical uh, design, but it's still cl um, classic in the shape. Right. I wanted to have a round case, very classic, but with uh, something special. And talk to us now about this magnificent movement. Yeah, so it's, uh, I'm very proud. It's my first own made, uh, totally home made uh, movement and also for the escapement, which is quite uh, rare. And uh, I wanted to, I really love this, the detent escapement. Right. I restore lots of pocket watches with this escapement and I wanted to, to have the challenge to make, it, to, to make it in a wristwatch. Right. And it was not easy. <laughs> it's a big challenge. Uh, yes, I can only imagine. You know, if I'm not mistaken, detent escapements, when they've been tried to be applied to pocket watches, they sometimes have an issue related to shock. Yeah. Uh, so how did you overcome this? In fact, there's a, um, a system, exi existing system. It was uh, patenting, patented uh, at the beginning of the 19, uh, of the beginning of the 20th century. Okay. And it's a very simple, you have a beak at the end of the detent mm -hmm. and the third roller on the balance wheel. Mm -hmm. When the detent ha has to move, you have a small, uh, uh, degagement, uh, the, uh, milling in the in the cam. Yes. So that's a, you, the detent can move. Okay. But when you don't want the detent mo move, uh, it's blocked it blocks by it. the cam. Oh yeah. wow, really cool. And how did you very very um, simple system, but yes. very efficient. How did you discover the system? I discover by old books. We in in, in old books. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. And in uh, Raoul Pages, like in your atelier, how many people are there? Only me. <laughs> Oh, I really? work alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And how many watches are you intending to make per year? Yeah, it's very few production. Right. I can only produce uh, four to five watches a year. Oh dear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think you probably have quite a lot more orders than four to five watches at this moment. Yeah, right now. Okay. Is, I'm happy it's a success for me. That's for wonderful. Model. And uh, yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Are you? Will you bring on some watchmakers to help you, or what's the plan? Maybe this model I want to keep uh, alone. Ah, cool. So all the regulator detent will be made by, by me. Very cool. And then I'm thinking about a future project, maybe with uh, one or two watchmakers to help me to produce a little bit more. <laughs> Amazing. Man, you, you took a close-up of the movement. Let's go in there one more time. So what you see here is this the stunning sort of break, um, marine chronometer style balance cock, massive balance wheel beating at what frequency? 18,000. Beating at 18,000 uh, 18, um, vibrations per hour. Then over here, you'll see the detent escapement as well and the beautiful finishing on this uh, German silver movement. And then you've got um, steel here. Yeah, uh, but matte finish. Matte finish yeah, steel. Yeah. That's old technique. It's old technique yeah. from pocket watches. Incredible. And I love that. So that's super classic. And then you turn it over and it just feels so vibrant and fresh with this. Uh, Color palette. Well, it's a stunning regulator dial, but with this color palette, and you were mentioning this is Corbusier blue, which is really lovely, also. And I like the, I like your hands, also, very beautiful. Uh, handmade, uh, handmade, handmade yeah. by you. Yeah. 
you're doing a lot, dude. With the bevel, uh, rounded poly polish. Incredible. I mean, that's it. That's watch is fantastic. Um, bravo, sir. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much.